In our previous videos, we analyzed some basic circuits incorporating operational amplifiers with negative feedback. For all those calculations, we assumed that our operational amplifier is ideal. This made our investigations much easier, because we could apply the rules we have learned. But in the lab, there is no such thing as an ideal operational amplifier. There are only real ones. Real operational amplifiers no longer satisfy our rules and have other properties you might want to consider during circuit design. So let's talk about non-idealities of operational amplifiers. All necessary information about these non-idealities are provided by the manufacturer in datasheets. The non-idealities we want to discuss today are the offset voltage, the bias and offset currents, the slew rate and the gain bandwidth product. All of these depend on the operational amplifier you want to use in your design and even change from device to device. Let's start with the offset voltage. As we have learned in one of our previous videos, the output voltage V out equals the differential gain GD times the differential input voltage VD. If we apply the same voltage to the inverting and non-inverting input, or simply short circuit the two inputs, the differential input voltage is zero volts. Consequently, an ideal operational amplifier would give us an output voltage V out of zero volts. If we experiment with a real operational amplifier, we will see that the output is not zero volts as we wished for. The effect is caused by the not perfectly symmetric differential input stage of our operational amplifier. In order to force the output voltage to zero volts, we have to apply a certain voltage between the two inputs. The voltage we have to apply is called the offset voltage VOS. If we consider the offset voltage for negative feedback amplifiers, we no longer can apply the first rule, which stated that the differential input voltage is zero volts. To circumvent this problem, we use a little, but powerful trick called modeling. Instead of analyzing the real operational amplifier with its offset voltage, we use an ideal one and add a voltage source to either the inverting or non-inverting input to represent the offset voltage. And from now on, all we have to do is to apply the superposition principle, just as we did for some of the other circuits. As an example, let's take a closer look at the inverting amplifier and add the offset voltage. In one of our previous videos, we derived the output voltage V out as a function of input voltage V in and the two resistors R1 and R2. In our current example, this shall be the output voltage V out prime if we just consider the input voltage V in and replace VOS by a short. In a second step, we replace V in by a short and calculate V out double prime as a result of the offset voltage VOS. By redrawing the circuit, we get a non inverting amplifier with a negative input voltage and can write the second output voltage. By summing up the individual parts, we obtain the total output voltage. Using the gain G of our inverting amplifier, we can rewrite the output voltage. For the given example, this means the higher we choose our gain, the more problematic the offset voltage will become. However, since we are now able to analyze the impact of the offset voltage on our circuit, we can pick a suitable operation amplifier with a low offset voltage. To do so, we set the limit to the offset voltage and only select operation amplifiers whose offset voltage will not exceed this limit. Further non-idealities are the currents flowing in the inverting and non-inverting input. Until now, we assume that no current is flowing into either input. But once we consider a real operational amplifier, this assumption no longer holds true and currents are flowing into the inverting and non-inverting input. Instead of providing the currents into the inverting and non-inverting input, the bias current IP and offset current IOS can be found in the datasheets. Bias and offset current share some similarities with the common mode and differential mode voltages we talked about in one of our previous videos. 
The bias current gives the mean current flowing into and out of both inputs. The offset current is the difference between the two input currents. This means that half of the offset current flows into one input and out of the other one. Providing the input currents this way allows us to analyze certain effects in our circuit more conveniently. In order to investigate the impact of the input currents, we model our circuit as we did before with the offset voltage. The currents are of course represented by current sources. The bias current flows in the same direction for both inputs, while the offset current is sourced into one input and drawn from the other one. Again, the inverting amplifier serves as an example and we apply the superposition principle. The output voltage V out prime as a function of input voltage can be reused from before. Next, we analyze the bias current at the inverting input. For calculating the influence of the offset and bias current, the operational amplifier is now considered ideal and the differential input voltage is zero volts. Consequently, also the voltage drop over R1 is zero volts and no current flows through R1. This means that the entire bias current has to flow through R2 and cause a voltage drop. By solving loop 1, we get the output voltage V out double prime as a result of the bias current at the inverting input. We go on with the bias current at the non-inverting input and can see that the current source is shorted and the bias current has no effect on the output. As for the offset current, we can see that it is affecting our circuit just like the bias current at the inverting input. We can simply reuse this result from before and substitute the offset current. The total output voltage is calculated as the sum of our individual results. Rewriting the total output voltage shows that the larger resistor R2 increases the impact of bias and offset current. With respect to them, a smaller resistor R2 would be beneficial. Fortunately, we can still set the gain of our circuit by selecting an appropriate value for R1. If R2 has a fixed value for some reason, we can still search the datasheets for an operation amplifier with smaller bias and offset currents to satisfy our needs. Real operational amplifiers cannot change the output voltage infinitely fast. Another non-ideality called the slew rate SR tells us how fast our operational amplifier can change its output voltage with respect to time. Imagine a voltage follower with a pulse voltage source connected to its input. An ideal operational amplifier would produce a square voltage wave at its output. However, a real operational amplifier is unable to do so as its change in output voltage is limited to the slew rate. In addition, the slew rate of rising and falling edges are in general not equal and our operational amplifier might have an easier time to decrease its output voltage than increasing it. Unfortunately, the slew rate does not only put a limit to the maximum operating frequency, but also to the maximum amplitude of our input signal and the gain of our circuit. But how so? Let us investigate a small example. We consider our trusty inverting amplifier and apply a sinusoidal input signal. Multiplying V in with the gain gives the output voltage. The change of output voltage with time must be lower than the minimum slew rate. To obtain the change in output voltage, we calculate the derivative with respect to time. For the maximum change in output voltage, we can set the cosine to 1. If either the frequency, the gain or the input signal amplitude is given, the slew rate puts a limit on the product of the other quantities. So plan ahead carefully and use those data sheets to pick the right operational amplifier. Finally, yet importantly, we want to discuss another non-ideality that puts the brake on our operational amplifier, the gain bandwidth product or transit frequency. An operational amplifier typically has a frequency response like a first order low pass filter. 
The frequency response is given in a double logarithmic scale. For lower frequencies, the operational amplifier can amplify signals with its full differential gain, G0. As the frequency increases, the gain drops and the operational amplifier is simply too slow to amplify the signal and the gain becomes 1. The frequency at which this happens is called the transit frequency, Ft. As the frequency response is like a first order low pass filter, the product of gain and frequency or simply gain bandwidth product is constant along this green line. Note that the point at the transient frequency is part of the green line. As the gain is 1 at this point, the gain bandwidth product equals the transient frequency. Consequently, the gain bandwidth product along the entire green line equals the transient frequency Ft. Hence, gain bandwidth product and transient frequency are synonymous and mean the same thing. The gain bandwidth product is given in the datasheets and tells us how fast our circuit can operate if we set a certain gain. Consider this frequency response. The blue line is the frequency response of our standalone operational amplifier. The red line represents the frequency response of our completed circuit, which could be, for an example, a non-inverting amplifier with gain G. Where the red line meets the blue one, the gain of our circuit starts to decrease. The corresponding frequency is the corner frequency Fc, up to which our circuit performs as intended. At this point we can state that the gain and frequency are related to the transit frequency. If we rewrite the equation, we can see that the higher we want our gain to be, the more we have to sacrifice on corner frequency. In other words, the higher the gain, the slower our circuit will operate. Now you know the most important non-idealities we encounter in operational amplifier circuits by modeling the offset voltage, bias current and offset currents with voltage and current sources respectively, we can apply our rules for operational amplifiers again. This enables us to study their impact on our circuit's performance. Other quantities like the slew rate and the gain bandwidth product limit the operating range of our circuit in terms of maximum frequency, gain or even input signal amplitude. All of these might become important at one point or another during circuit design. So if your circuit does not work as you have planned, make sure to check some of these non-idealities. I'm Patrick with the Institute of Electronics. We hope you have learned something today, but anyway, thanks for watching. If you want to learn more about Operation Amplifier circuits, we highly recommend The Art of Electronics by Horowitz and Hill as well as Elektronische Schaltungstechnik by members of our institute.